what is human genome project and why we are studying about human genome project human genome project is the project in which all the genes or the nucleotide sequence the way nucleotides or base pairs are present in dna of human beings were sequenced in all of the chromosomes as we know human beings have 23 pairs of chromosome in which there are several thousands of genes present and it can is made up of base pairs so the aim of human genome or the in human genome project all these genes were sequenced now why human genome project in each and every individual there are differences in geno gene sequences because all individuals have several differences in their physical as well as genome structure for example eye color DNA fingerprint these are different and unique for each and every individual that's why human genome project means sequencing of human genome was very important and also to determine which gene codes for which protein now this was started in year 1990 estimated cost 9 billion dollars now how is the estimated cost is 9 billion dollars it is estimated that if sequencing one gene required 3 US dollars then there are total 3 into 10 to the power 9 genes so it will require 9 billion dollars US dollars the project completed on 2003 it took a very long time as we can see 13 years now why this project was called mega project as I told human genome have 3 into 10 to the power 9 genes if in a book there are thousand pages and in one page thousand sequences gene, gene sequences can be written then completion of or writing the sequences of all human genes require 3300 books like this from this only you can understand how big the approach was to uh, sequence all the genes in human beings now coming to the next point that is goals of human genome project what are the goals and uh, one more point I want to add that sequencing human genome was humanly not possible that's why it was done using bioinformatics now coming to the goals to identify all the genes in human beings that is from 20,000 to 25,000 genes in human beings now next point determine sequence of sequences of 3 billion chemical base pairs determine sequence of 3 billion base pairs present in human DNA store this information in database improve the tools of data analysis transfer related technologies to other sectors such as industries and to address or deal with ethical legal and social issues that may arise from this project in simple words determine all the genes that is 20,000 to 25,000 
determine all the base pairs in sequences base pairs as we know adenine guanine cytosine thymine those are four bases and ATGC are the base pairs found in human beings transfer related technologies improvement of tools or technologies used in each project and ELSI that is ethical legal social issues dealing of it now who coordinated this project US Department of Energy and National Institute of Health both are US organizations and also other nations were involved that is China Japan France and Germany now coming to the next point that is methods used in HGP still now we only uh, dealt with the information related to HGP now coming to the processes processes actually used to sequence human genome basically two two methods are applied one is ETS that is expressed sequence tag I repeat ETS express sequence tag and next process is sequence annotation what is ETS in this method only the genes which code for or which synthesize RNA were sequenced what is done in sequence annotation first the nucleotides all the genes or all the nucleotides Mm, as well as the base pairs we can say including both coding and non coding sequ uh, sequences or base pairs were determined or identified then they were sequenced according to their function means one after another af like that uh, according to their function like for example lacoperon what we know in lacoperon there are three structural genes z y and a z codes for beta galactosidase y uh, codes for permease a codes for transacetylase so z is the main enzyme uh, then comes the role of permease then comes the role of transacetylase according to that it is um, used now coming to the vectors used and the method used what is done from a cell first DNA were isolated then th that DNA was broken into small pieces and inserted into suitable hosts using vectors and then they were amplified later sequences sequencing become easier because the, the amount of DNA means each small uh, nucleotide or small fragment was increased in amount that is amplification now coming to which uh, vectors are used two vectors that is back or bacterial artificial chromosome and yak that is yeast artificial chromosome these two types of vectors were most preferred now coming to the salient features of human genome so human genome has many salient features first they have as we studied okay also we must know about that fragments how fragments were sequenced using automated DNA sequences which was developed by Frederick Sanger so fragments were seen uh, sequenced using DNA sequencer automated DNA sequencer then uh, what to say alignment of the sequences were not humanly possible that was done by bioinformatics that is one new arena of uh, or area of uh, in, in biology here it's given this is the chromosome as you can see this is the chromosome then coming to the DNA it is automatically sequenced now coming to the next part and as we know 
uh, in human beings there are 22 autosomes that is chromosome present in both these cells and two allosomes that is X and Y chromosome either XX or XY now coming to salient features in human genome there are 3164.7 million nucleotide bases now average gene consists of 3000 bases and it can vary in size for example the largest human gene is dystrophin that constitute of 2.4 million bases now total number of estimated genes that is uh, thought to thought by the scientists is 30,000 previously before uh, starting of this pr uh, project it was thought 80,000 to 1 lakh 40,000 now functions of approximately or more than 50% of the discovered genes are still not known and less than 2% of the genome codes for protein and repeated sequence are very common means a large portion of human genome constitute of repeated sequence now coming to repeated sequence um, it do not have any direct function but they shed light on or they tell us about chromosome structure dynamics and evolution now chromosome 1 has most genes and uh, sequencing of chromosome 1 was completed in May 2006 chromosome 1 has most genes that is 2000 968 and Y have fewest that is 231 so you can just understand the difference in the ratio in chromosome 1 it's 2968 and in chromosome Y it's that is one of the allosome present in male person that is 231 now rep uh, coming to the repetitive sequences there are okay sorry now coming to the uh, SNPs SNPs that is single nucleotide polymorphism what is that that uh, single base difference is found in 1.4 million locations in human genome this information help us or give us hope to understand or uh, to deal with the disease associated sequences and tracing human history I repeat this point what are SNPs SNP full form is single nucleotide polymorphism what it is in case of human genome there are single base differences in approximately 1.4 million locations now coming to the application and future future challenges okay one more uh, point I want to share that along with the human genome also sequences of E. coli Arabidopsis that is one plant along with that right rice plant Drosophila that is fruit fly and one more nematode that is this one Cinerohabditis elegans that is free living non pathogenic nematode all these um, organisms are also living beings are also sequenced now coming to the application we know that um, human genome can just revolutional rev revolutionize our lives it can just increase our lifespan can make us disease free then we can study everything about the all the genes in our genome and uh, the transcript in part in a particular tissue or organ or tumor or how tens of thousands of gene and protein work together in interconnected net network to or orchestrate the chemistry of life these all we can understand